I think we got enough, so we're gonna roll out of here. Yeah, go ahead, Ben. Southwest 29th and Penn, Roger. And Oak City Approach News 9's headed back to, to the west. We have the four in flight there. We're dropping down to 1.8. They're right over uh, across from me. Next road, next intersection, yeah. Looks like it's a pickup pulling a trailer. Yep. And approach just let you know we're over the pursuit. We're still headed to south on western. It appears to be a pickup with a trailer here, Alex. We just arrived on scene now. You can see the two Oklahoma City black and whites uh, trailing that pickup, uh, pulling that trailer right now. We are on western going southbound. As we take a street scope shot here, we just passed southwest 65th here, southbound on western. It's not a really a high-speed pursuit, uh, Alex. Uh, they are uh, just trailing this pickup with a trailer. He refuses uh, to pull over or yield for the police officers here. So he's still going southbound on western. And like I said, we st keep street scope up. You can see we're just past Southwest 68th at this time. Uh, we're still trying to gather information exactly why uh, this person refused to stop for the police officers. But we'll be coming up to I-240 here shortly, so it'll be interesting on what uh, what he's going to do here, whether he's going to try to get on I-240 or stay southbound on Western. But like I said, it's not a very high-speed pursuit at all. But you're looking at that pickup right there pulling a the trailer. And like I said, as we go along here, Alex will try to gather information of uh, why they are in pursuit of this pickup, whether it's whether stolen or whether he just refused to stop for the police officers here. You can see him getting a center median there. It appears uh, he's still going to go southbound on Western at this time. Was he got uh, comes under the I-240 uh, overpass there. We pull back a little bit. We'll see what Street Scope says here. And it was still southbound on Western. It looks like uh, what's the next day? Southwest 77th is what we're coming up to now, Alex. And like I said, maybe you have heard, I haven't heard yet, Alex, of what they, they are actually trying to stop this pickup for. That's right, and with Street Scope, that's the great thing about Street Scope is actually we can pop that uh, speedometer up on the screen, and then viewers can actually see as we long as we keep that car in the crosshairs here and uh, kind of tight, it will give you the readout of the speed of that vehicle. And like I said, it's not a very high-speed pursuit at all. And as you see from Street Scope here, we're uh, passing Striker Terrace. We we're in a in a. Hang on, just a uh, Roger that. We'll be looking for Air One. We're at uh, 2.3. Uh, Roger that. And right now we're coming up to, uh, as we pull back here a little bit, uh, we'll see what Street Scope says. It looks like Black Welder Avenue and Stryker Terrace there is where we are. Now he's turned back north on Black Welder there, uh, headed towards uh, I-240. He'll be coming out of this uh, housing addition here. You can see Southwest 77th. We're still on Black Welder. You see I-240. So again, like I said, Alex, it's not a very high-speed pursuit, which is uh, good. I mean, that's that's a great thing, especially when you're driving a pickup, pulling a trailer. You get very fast here, and Air One has just now come over the top of this pursuit now, so they will uh, be uh, doing uh, high cover for this pursuit for the police officers on the ground. Looks like he's turning back uh, east on the service road of I-240 there. And still still not a high-speed pursuit, Alex, like I said. Uh, he's still uh, pretty much kind of just taking his time here, but refuses. Oh, now he's merging. Now he crossed the median there. Just I said it was... Uh, not getting too crazy across the median there. Now he's eastbound on I-240 here. Now we'll see what the police officer is going to do, but they can kind of relax, Alex, because Air One is now over this pursuit, so he can track them and stay with them until the police officers get in position here. 
to either try to get up in front of this guy or, uh, or merge onto I-240 here. It appears he may be picking up speed here now, Alex, so we're gonna move up a little bit and uh, kind of get uh, a beam of him here. And uh, that way we can see what street scope is uh, telling us uh, exactly how fast he's going. He's starting to really stretch it out a little bit now, Alex. He's starting to get on the pedal a little bit, picking up speed. No, they did not, Alex. They they uh, stayed on the service road to merge onto I-240 here. Like I said, they got Air One up above him now, so basically Air One can just tell him uh, where he is, so they they don't have to do anything uh, uh, crazy or, or you know endanger anybody. Uh, they just let him let Air One track him. And of course, uh, with our street scope technology that we have, uh, we're above it now, so we can actually tell the police officers exactly what street he is on and what street he is crossing. So that's a that's a big help to them to know exactly where this person is. But right now he's still eastbound on I-240. We have a construction area here on the eastbound lanes which has it down to two lanes there and construction equipment. But like I said, he the only really uh, dangerous thing he did was there across the median, uh, across the grass to get on I-240 and merge on. That was uh, about the only thing I've seen so far. And then he got into high rate of speed there for a little bit. Now he's kind of backed off as we come up to the I-240, I-35 interchange here. It appears he's gonna stay eastbound on I-240 at this time here, so uh, again, the good thing is he's not he's not getting real crazy here and putting a lot of people in danger. He's staying a pretty much a, a constant speed right now and staying in that left uh, left lane and and uh, really not uh, causing any you know like I said endangering anybody on the on the I-240 at this time. I'm looking back to see if the police officers have come on on they have. I don't see black and white yet. Uh, or anything. I see Air One's just off down south of me tracking him here, but I haven't seen any black and whites move up yet on this pickup. Uh, I'm going to have to make a radio call here, uh, Alex, so I'm going to toss it back to you. there of That's right, Alex, I'm with you right now. Uh, he is coming up to an intersection here. We will pull out and find out exactly what intersection he's uh, getting ready to cross here. It looks like that's southeastern and southeast, uh, what was that? I didn't quite catch it, was it southeast 89th? I believe, I believe it was southeast 89th that he just crossed here. Now he is on eastern southbound here. Air One is still with us, but I see no black and whites at this time coming up behind him. Or anything, Alex. Uh, like I said, it's, it's now kind of went back to a normal speed here, uh, and I don't know if he feels he's just uh, nobody's pursuing him, or if he's in the clear, or he's just uh, driving like he was earlier. Like I said, this is not a really high-speed pursuit till I got on I-240 there, and according to street scope and viewers can see the speedometer there in the corner that he almost reached uh, uh, speeds of close to 100 miles an hour there, got 90 miles an hour uh, close there on the on the coming down I-240 eastbound. But uh, it'd be really interesting, Alex, of why this person is uh, fleeing from the police officers if this is a stolen truck and trailer or, or just uh, something else or he just refused, to, refused to, to stop on a normal traffic stop. Well, he just threw something out, so I'm not sure what that was, Alex. A case of some kind, he just threw out the door there, so we can mark that with street scope. What we can do with street scope is we can actually drop pins down to where objects come out, and we can later uh, go back and have the camera find where an object was thrown out and had the camera find uh, by this pin on the screen uh, to where that object was thrown out at this time. Uh, 
Let me just check here real quick, Alex. Air one, you up on 2302. Air one, you on 2302. That's right, he's now turned westbound on north uh, northeast 12th. He is going uh, westbound on northeast 12th, which is gonna be uh, the Moore area here. Like I said, it's not, uh, he still hasn't, uh, he's kept it at a kind of a normal speed here, Alex. Uh, he hasn't really uh, done anything erratic or anything. He's keeping it at a normal speed. And like I said, uh, I don't know if that's uh, because he don't see any police officers behind him or anybody pursuing him or he's, you know, it's just hard to, hard to figure out what this person's thinking here but right now you see he's on northeast 12th from street scope he's crossing the railroad tracks we'll see uh, it'd be kind of interesting when he gets up here to uh, i-35 and to see what he decides to do when he gets to i-35 here but he's slowing down again uh, looks like he's going to turn into this neighborhood so what do we got on street scope there that's uh nail parkway looks like it's nail parkway he has turned northbound on nail parkway from northeast 12th and he's going up into this neighborhood that's on the east side of i-35 in more so like i said air one's right above him you can see air one right there just passed through the screen so again uh as we look at street scope here we got nail parkway he crossed meadowbrook drive i'm looking to see if there's a exit out of this this housing addition looks like he's gonna well i'm not sure what he's doing now well he is being polite and letting cars pass that's that's the good thing alex uh He's just taking his time here. And I, like I said, I think it's just because he feels that he's not being pursued anymore. Here's why he's taking the, just kind of leisurely taking his time here. You're gonna see this kind of uh, 90 degree turn. Uh, the only way out of this uh, housing addition is back over to the west here. And I'm not sure if he knows where he's going or if he's familiar with this area or not, Alex, but like I said, you can see he's not, he's not in any big hurry. He's just taking his time here. And you're gonna look by street scope, we pass Fox Avenue on Northeast 18th, just past Fox Avenue. And we'll be coming up to, to we're actually going westbound towards I-35 at this time. Oh, oh, okay. I, I don't know if that person was intentionally trying to block him or what. I, Okay, the, yeah, that pickup uh, almost got hit there. I don't think he did. I don't think he did clip him, but it was very close at this time. So now he's coming up to North Broadway Street. He's uh, he's now he's going to back up. He's backing up. He's backing up here. I believe there's a. I'm not sure what he is. That a police officer behind him, Ben? Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. Looks like he's asking directions from the mailman there, Alex. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but that's North Broadway that he's coming up to. So now he's going to go northbound on North Broadway here. Okay, we got a black and white that's going to meet him head on here, so I don't know what's going to happen here. There's the black and whites just past him. It just went by him. Okay, now he's northbound on Broadway, passing Northeast 21st. Another black and white that just passed him. Okay, Alex, this next inter sorry to interrupt you. Next intersection, we have several police officers at this intersection up here. So we're going to see what's going to take place here as he comes up North Broadway to uh, Northeast 27th. You can see all those police officers right there. So I don't know what's going to happen here. 
Like I said, so he's in the he's in the left turn lane, so it looks like he may be going back west or he's gonna go straight. Okay, he went he went straight on North Broadway again. So I'm gonna roll around here, Ben. I'm gonna he's gonna be coming close to underneath us here. As I come around. Okay, he's gonna merge onto I-35. He is he's now gonna be merging onto I-35, going northbound on I-35. And now he's gonna be gaining speed, Alex. Oh, oh, they, oh, there's a car spinning out right behind him. He clipped a car. Oh, lucky that person held on to it. He clipped a car right there, and lucky that person held on to it. They almost lost it and slammed into the median there. The black and whites are weaving their way through it, but uh, luckily that person did not hit that retaining wall. Boy, that was close, Alex. That was very, very close. You can see traffic uh, kind of it's kind of stopped traffic back there and letting the black and whites through. So now... Now it's getting kind of dangerous, Alex. Now now things, we almost had a major wreck right there from where he uh, clipped a car. And now he is northbound on I-35. Well, what are we crossing there, Ben, from Street Scope? It looks like a north, southeast 82nd. We just crossed southeast 82nd. We're still northbound. We'll see what he's gonna, now he's gonna exit again. It looks like he's gonna exit. He's gonna be back on I-240. He's gonna be back, uh, e either he can get on He's gonna, let's see, he's gonna come up here. Uh, okay, he's going eastbound on I-240 now, back from I-35. Eastbound from I-240 on I-35. Okay, now now we got uh, endangerment here uh, to go along with this, Alex, because he almost caused that uh, van, silver van. He clipped the silver van, it spun uh, sideways and then back the other way, almost hit the retaining wall, but that driver was able to hold on to it and get that car stopped. Right now they have I-35 uh, kind of slowed up down there where that uh, accident almost happened, uh, making sure that person is all right in that car. So now we got black and whites now coming up behind this uh, person that uh, we understand is a sol stolen pickup with a trailer going eastbound on I-240, and uh, we'll be coming up here. We'll see what intersection we're going to be passing. This might be eastern, I think, again, uh, Ben, as we look at street scope here as he comes by. But uh, yeah, that's the southeastern that uh, we're going to be coming across again. We got okay. He's got slow traffic in front of him. And you see the black and white right behind him there. Yeah, he may be, Alex, and right now they got I-35 uh, pretty much shut down to just one lane as uh, they are checking that person out in that van to make, I believe that happened around, close to around southeast 82nd or something is uh, where that uh, almost took place. So traffic coming northbound on I-35 is going to be very slow. It's going to start backing up, and that is caused by this pursuit here uh, from him almost taking out a van on I-35 around southeast 82nd. So now he's exiting again. Let's see what he's, uh, he's going to do. The good thing is he's getting it. Okay, now he's coming off. It's a Bryant, but now he's uh, kind of. Okay, let's see. There's a little ditch right there. Let's see if he's going to make this. Okay, so now he, he's came back on I-240, going eastbound. The police officer just followed. They're following him through. Okay, now we got one, two, three, four, five uh, black and whites that are now going to come up uh, and get into this pursuit here. And we got more. We got one, two. Looks like two more uh, getting on the service road here. So we're starting to get more and more help as we go along here since uh, this uh, person decided to almost cause a severe accident on I-35 coming northbound around southeast 82nd. So like I said, everyone is still shadowing him. We got on him, of course, uh, you know, the great thing about street scope is is that we can read the, show the viewer the speed of this vehicle. We can also show the viewer the roads as he crosses the roads there and we can re relay this to the police officers and stuff so they know exactly where this guy is at all times, and uh, so hopefully they'll get this guy stopped here. As we go out eastbound on I-240 here, the traffic is getting uh, uh, less and less, so he's got a pretty big open highway here to keep running eastbound, so we'll just uh, keep following him. Like I said, uh, I think you told me, Alex, this is a stolen vehicle, and he refused to yield for police officers, so this pursuit has, I don't know, Alex, you can tell him how long this pursuit's been going on. I kind of lose track of time up here. 
but we're getting ready to cross the south end of Tinker. I'll have to make a call here. I'll talk to you later in a little bit. And Oak City uh, News 9, we're going to be still eastbound on I-240 getting ready to cross south end of Tinker. Okay, let's. Okay, slowing down, Alex. Here, I don't know why he's slowing down. What he's what he's thinking is here. But he's now come to a stop. Well, now he's now he's rolling down on the. He's on the shoulder. We're still eastbound on I-240. Okay, he's going to cut across the the grass again. The median. Let's see, Ben, what uh, what road we're on. Okay, he's, that's going to be South Air Depot Road. He's come off I-240 eastbound. Now, if the officers could get up here, they might have a chance to stop him right here if they can get up there quick enough. But uh, I think they're just going to lay back and see what he, okay, so he's, he's coming up to, okay, now we're going southbound on South Air Depot. Okay, we got two cars blocking the road down here, so let's see what's going to happen here. I don't know if this is police officers or if this is uh, civilian people right here you can see it right there South Air Depot Road just off okay they're going to move that's that's good okay we look like we got the Oklahoma City uh, gun range that he's uh, coming up to this is going to be a dead end so now he's blocked himself in so there's no place for him to go like I said that he uh, made the wrong turn to come into the Oklahoma City uh, gun range down here in south and that is a dead end road so now he's just setting uh, the police officers are coming up behind him so we'll see what happens here Alex like I said uh, this person definitely didn't want to be caught he didn't want to stop uh, he almost caused an accident on I-35 uh, I around southeast 82nd he put a lot of people in danger right there because that was a pretty high speed when he clipped that car and uh, it was just a miracle that that driver was able to Hey, uh oh, he's coming up to the gate. Oh, he broke right through the gate. Well, I hate to tell him this. As we pull back wide, as we pull back wide here, you're going to see the Oklahoma City uh, gun range right there. There's Oklahoma City uh, police officers uh, gun range. You see Air Depot. That's a dead end right there, so he can't go. Uh, so at this point, Alex, I don't believe he knows where, where he's going or what he's on or anything. He's going to try to take this little road right here. But I think he's pretty much uh, he's pretty much run out of luck right here. Well, he's gonna if he even takes this road, there's basically no place for him to go. He's gonna run uh, into a fence line, and it's probably gonna get pretty. I think there's a, a gully, a small ditch at the end of this uh, road right here that he's he's not gonna be able to make. So we'll see what happens. It's gonna get kind of interesting right here. Yep. So we we got to be careful right here to see if he's uh okay. He's gonna try to back up. I have a feeling there's only one place to go, and that's into one of these fields here to try to. We got police officers coming up behind him right now. Be careful. He's liable to ram one of these police officers here. Okay. He's trying to turn around here. Okay now. We just got a stack of uh, police officers here, so I'm not sure what's going to happen, Alex. That's what I thought. He's going to go into this field here. Well, boy. Okay, be ready. Ben, he's liable to. Okay, for people just joining, this is a, this is the dead end of South Air Depot Road. This is the dead end. Uh, south of I-240, right around the Oklahoma City Police uh, gun range here. He is now cutting across his field. Which, let's see, he's going kind of uh, kind of northwest bound across his field. 
So that'd be northwest. Uh, he's going from Air Depot Road, South Air Depot Road, kind of angling back towards I-240 here. And he is, uh, he's really flying through this field, Alex. Okay, he's gonna lose the trailer here. There goes the trailer. So he's lost the trailer now. It's just a vehicle uh, pursuit here from, from here on out. It's gonna be the pickup. The uh, trailer was lost in the field there. So uh, pan up real quick, Ben. Let's see what street he's trying to head for. Looks like that's Southeast 84th, uh, between Southeast 86th and Southeast 84th Street here. He's trying to, but he's stopping in the middle of the field. Okay, now he's out of the truck. Okay, he's got a handgun. Oh, that's his phone. It may, it's, may be his phone. It may be his phone. Yeah. It looks like he's trying to untangle fence. Uh, boy, I don't know what he's trying to do, Alex, to tell you the truth, but we're in this field here. There's basically no place for him to go. He's come to a stop. He has fence uh, wound up all around this truck. You can see all the stuff falling out there. I don't know what he's looking for. But the police officer is now in the field. We've got three black and whites uh, coming up around him here. We've got air one over the top of him. Well, he, tried, he clipped the wire off the truck. So he clipped the bob wire that he ran through off the truck. And he's going to get back in and try it again here, Alex. This person does not want to be caught whatsoever. So let's see, he's headed southbound, so Ben, pan up. What street? we got Southeast 89th. So he's headed towards Southeast 89th uh, right now. And uh, he's angling over to Southeast 89th. We'll see where he goes from here. He can't go back to the east because Southeast 89th is dead end, so he's going to have to go west. I got you in sight there, five. So uh, he's looking for a way out here. Now he's going to turn back uh, northbound into the police officers here. Boy, I tell you what, I don't know what's going to happen here, but uh, we got the two, four, six, seven black and whites here along with Air One. He's racing back northbound through this field, which is going to come back up to southeast. I think that was 84th. He's looking for a way to get through. Okay, at some point here, I tell you what, this is this is pretty bizarre here, Alex. There's absolutely no place for him to go, but he is refusing to even give up here with all the black and whites that are around him right now. And the police officers are, you know, people may be wondering why why the police officers aren't running up there right now, and uh, they're keeping their distance because they they're not sure exactly what's in this truck or what he has. But uh, okay, he's going to try to run through the fence here. Okay, he broke through, and now he's back on, uh, what was that, uh, Southeast 84th? Yep, Southeast 84th. So now he is going westbound on Southeast 84th in this neighborhood. And you can see from Street Scope, uh, you can see Jenny Lane that he just passed. He's coming around on Southeast 84th, but he goes Southeast uh, 85th on Jenny Lane. Okay, as he turns uh, right there on Southeast 85th, that is gonna take him back over to uh, to Sooner Road. So he's going to be coming up to Sooner Road here. And uh, here we go again, Alex. Uh, it's uh, This has been a really bizarre uh, chain of events here on this stolen pickup here that had a trailer moments ago, but when he cut through that field, if people were watching, lost that trailer. He's now going to come southbound on Sooner Road in this stolen pickup. It appears to be a white male, slim white male, uh, I don't know his age at this time, but uh, this is a stolen uh, vehicle. And uh, it's pretty amazing that he got out and got some wire cutters out of that truck and cut the barbed wire off of him around this pickup and then just got back in and took off again, Alex. So again, that's why the police officers are kind of maintaining their distance because they're not quite sure uh, exactly what is in this truck. I don't know what this car is. I don't know what that uh, was uh, right there, but that car swerved and came across the front of him. 
So again, we're southbound, Alex, on uh, Sooner Road. We'll look at Street Scope here, and we'll see what uh, road we are coming up to. Uh, it looks like uh, Sooner Road. What do we got? So we got southeast 104th. So we're going to be rolling up to southeast 104th southbound on Sooner Road at this time. That's right, Alex. Uh, but the good thing is, uh, if there's any good thing out of this, is he's lost the trailer now. So the trailer is what caused that, almost caused that accident on I-35. So you don't have something trailing out behind that truck, whipping around uh, when he gets to swerving in and out. So that's a, that's a, I believe it's just still Oklahoma City at this point. Uh, uh, like I hadn't really had a chance to zoom in on the cars and and, and look, uh, but uh, we got these two here, and then there's several uh, back behind these two, a uh, uh, couple of miles that are uh, in trail here. Like I said, they don't have to push anything right now because Air One's over the scene, and we got the two black and whites that are now shadowing. But uh, okay, we actually it looks like uh, we got one K9 unit that's uh, right there behind him. The first car behind us. The pickup is a K9 unit, and the other one's an Oklahoma City police car. Uh, he's now in the opposite lane of traffic. He's come back in. Like I said, we'll slow up here. We'll get a street scope uh, exactly what the speed is along here as we try to get a street scope reading. Okay, it looks like he's picking up speed now. So we're coming up to an intersection here. We'll see what's going to happen. Like I said, this is southbound Sooner Road. Southbound Sooner Road, we're coming up to an intersection. That's gonna be southeast 134th. He is gonna go westbound on southeast 134th, back towards I-35. So again, uh, you know, the police officers are keeping their distance. Uh, you know, they may just be waiting on uh, attrition to take care of this truck, either run out of gas or something breaks on the truck or the truck gives it up or whatever. Uh, you know, they may be waiting wait for that uh, you know the last thing they want to do Alex is put anybody in danger that's why they're not really pushing this guy that hard uh, like I said he almost caused one accident on the northbound lanes I-35 around southeast uh, 82nd Street or 86th Street in between there so they're just ta taking their time and he's not really uh, pushing it really hard right now like I said we're back kind of to a normal speed here as we come up uh, come up to the next intersection from southeast 134th there's Stone Creek Drive we just passed. Uh, let's see what this intersection is we're coming up to. Looks like that's going to be Sunny Lane Road. So he's went uh, he's went east west still westbound southeast 134th through Sunny Lane Road. Here so again just uh, pretty much okay we've had uh, okay the police officers are turning back north on Sunny Lane here so there's nobody behind him at this time so I'm not exactly what's going on here Alex. Okay, Alex, what I've been told is that uh, Oklahoma City has terminated this pursuit. Uh, they are going to leave Air One up over the top of him to shadow him. But as uh, far as the ground units, they have uh, told the ground units to back off. They have terminated the pursuit at this time. So uh, with Air One, it is just going to monitor this vehicle 
and uh, see where he comes to a stop or what's exactly going to happen here. That's right, Alex, and uh, like I said, he's uh, still westbound on uh, southeast 134th. Like I said, he stopped in the middle of the road there for a minute. I wasn't sure what that was uh, for, but he stopped uh, right there in the inside lane. This is a four-lane road, southeast 134th. He stopped on the inside lane uh, for a minute, and I, I thought maybe he was going to get out, or but uh, now he has uh, decided to drive on here. And from Street Scope, you can see it has now turned into Southeast 4th Street. We're back on Southeast 4th Street, so we're in Moore, and we're uh, going along Southeast 4th. And I'm not even going to try to pronounce that word uh, street there, Alex. I'll let you handle that one. But uh, there's one I can pronounce, the so Patterson Drive. We're just coming up to Patterson Drive there on Southeast 4th. Like I said, Air 1 is still over the top, uh, shadowing this person. So we'll just, uh, you know, we'll just play it out here, Alex, and see see what happens. Like I said, the, the ground pursuit has been terminated. They, they said keep Air 1 up over the top of this uh, person. This is a stolen truck, I've been told. Uh, it's been a wild pursuit. Uh, like I said, I don't know exactly how long it's been going on. You got that, Alex, but it's been a wild pursuit going through, like I said, the Oklahoma City gun range, up and down I-240 a couple of times, I-35, uh, then uh, ended up on the south air depot at the Oklahoma City gun range uh, then turn around and went through an open field through barbed wire fences they had time to stop and cut all the barbed wire off his pick pickup and then get back in the pursuits uh, picked back up again and then now it terminated here a few minutes ago and he is now uh, still westbound on southeast fourth coming up to I-35 so he's driving in the wrong lane so whether the police is behind him or not Alex he is uh, he is now uh, getting crazy here He's swerving into the oncoming traffic uh, for no reason at all. There's no reason to be in the opposite lane of traffic here. But uh, now he is coming up to what street has that been? Let's see. It looks like South Broadway again. So we're southeast fourth. It's okay. We're going to head northbound back on South Broadway. We've got a black and white coming up from the north. He's going to pass him here. Okay. That's right, Alex, and, and that's uh, probably a very good idea for people that uh, maybe don't think of why aren't they stopping him, why aren't they doing this. Well, you know, he's already shown uh, he's already shown uh, kind of erratic behavior here, so the last thing they want to do is push him uh, and make him do something else or cause another accident here. So they're letting their one, that's the best uh, thing to do. Uh, but it looks like we got two black and whites rolling up behind him now, right now, coming up on Southeast 4th, coming up to the service road of I-35 here. Okay, so we're back on Southeast 4th. We're gonna continue westbound on Southeast 4th. And I believe that next road, so that serves up that next road, is that Telephone Road? I'm not sure. Yeah, Telephone Road. Okay, he's not, okay. He just went through the stop sign there without yielding or stopping. And that is now Telephone Road uh, from southeast 4th here in Moore. If this pursuit continues southbound on Telephone Road, that's going to pass behind the Warren Theater and that area in the hospital uh, to give everybody kind of a landmark of exactly where this is. And it looks like, okay, he's going to go westbound on, uh, what are we looking at? I kind of got sun in my face there, southwest 4th. So now we're on southwest 4th uh, from Telephone Road west of I-35 going westbound. And Alex, we have two black and whites up behind him again. We got a third one uh, back behind this. Is that more police officers uh, being or is that Oklahoma City? 
Okay, there we got more police officers in pursuit now, Alex. So more appears to have taken over this pursuit here. Uh, as it is in the city proper of Moore here as we go on uh, Southwest 4th from I-35 and Telephone Road here. So let's see, we still, what uh, we got coming up here, we got an intersection coming up. It's kind of slowing down again. He's blowing through the lights. Oh, okay. Okay, he made a, a right turn there on that road. That is Markwell, Markwell Avenue. Now he's gonna make a U and come back and try to come back, try to come back to Southwest 4th. Okay, now he's, now he's back on Southwest 4th, coming westbound. And we're coming up to another major intersection here. That is going to be Santa Fe. Now we're going to go southbound on Santa Fe. Santa Fe from Southwest 4th here and more. Southbound in pursuit to more police in pursuit of this stolen vehicle that Oklahoma City police officers terminated. And now more police has picked it up with Air 1 still in the vicinity uh, shadowing uh, this, uh, this pickup here. So we're southbound on Santa Fe from Southwest 4th. So Alex, we'll just keep running here. You can see a uh, great thing about street scope is that there that names the streets off as he passes them uh, so we know exactly where this subject is at any time and if police officers need help we can radio exactly where that vehicle is and what street it passes at any given time here and also we can show them this uh, tell them the speed if they're not sure what the sp uh, what the, how fast this person is traveling down this road we have the ability to shadow that truck and pull up that speedometer so uh, people can see it at home to tell you exactly how fast that pickup is going here so again, he's not he's not too erratic right now, Alex, but he is uh, still southbound Santa Fe coming up to a major intersection here. So we'll see what happens here. And I'm gonna toss it back to you, Alex. I'm gonna have to make a radio call. And Oak City Approach, uh, we're still southbound on Santa Fe here. Do you want me to stay with you or you would like me to go to? Well, never mind. he turned westbound here, headed back uh, towards uh, westbound from Santa Fe, south of the airport. News 9, Roger. Yep, that, uh, nope, Air One is right here. He's just uh, north of me now. So now you see this person has taken off across the field again. Uh, let's see, Orr Family Farms. He's just south of Orr Family Farms right now. If people are familiar with that, that's on Western. He is just south of Orr Family Farms, kind of shadowing. Uh, here he's, he's made a back uh, eastbound turn here in the field. Uh, so this is the opportunity here for these police officers if they need to stop him. They could probably go up and uh, do something here. But... Uh, He's uh, coming north in the field now through the heavy brush. Now there's a big chain link fence at the end of this road here, at the end of this field here. So he's gonna, he's kind of boxed, his, boxed himself in unless he plans on going through this heavy chain link fence because it goes around on the north side and on the west side. So the only way out is he needs to go back southbound uh, towards uh, the road there, which uh, is what exactly what he's doing. And uh, there's a little up. Oh, he's going to squeeze there a little gap there. There was a gate there, so he squeezed through that gate. And like I said, this is all taking place just on the south. That's, I believe that's Orr Family Farms property right there, also that he's on right now. So it's just south of Orr Family Farms here as we come up. You're looking at uh, Southwest 149th. That should be Western at the intersection there, depending on which way he goes. Up oh, there's another chain link fence. Okay, okay. What are they going to do here? I'm not sure. So, no, he's not going to yield for him. He's not going to stop for him. So, uh, they're going to, okay, he's going to go back northbound in his field along that chain link fence here. 
boy, this is this person does not want to be caught, Alex, whatsoever. I mean, this pursuit's been going on for a while, and we've been on roads, highway, dirt roads, gravel roads, fields, plowed fields, went through fences, everything here. And now this is on the south side of Orr Family Farms, getting on these little uh, road here. And you'll see as we pull back wide, as we pull back wide here, you're gonna see Orr Family Farms right there on your left-hand side of the screen as we move up here. So there's the Orr Family Farm Complex. He's probably going to come back uh, on this road here. Well, now that just goes, that even goes deeper into Fort Orr Family Farms, which is not a good thing, but it don't appear that there's any people at Orr Family Farms today. Well, right now I just see the two. There was a third one in that field. He's still in the field down there. Uh, so, so another pickup is approaching the exit right there. Okay, it looks like he's going to try to block. Well, no, he's going to get out of the way, which is a smart move because, well, now he's he's just going to skip the road. He's just going to take the grass and get back over to Western here. So I don't know if his plan here is Alex is just for everybody else to run out of gas or whatever. He hopes they run out of gas or something happens and he can get away or, or what here. But uh, this has been uh, this has been quite the pursuit here. And like I said, it hadn't really, except for the time on I-35 coming northbound around southeast 80 where he almost caused that accident, it really hasn't gotten too crazy. He's, he's moved into the opposite lane of traffic a couple of times on uh, side roads. But uh, as far as just getting really crazy, it hadn't, of course, he's blown through stop signs and stop lights, but not at a really high speed. He's kept it at a very uh, manageable speed here as he goes southbound along Western here. And uh, we come back to Street Scope here. We'll see what road he's getting ready to pass. It looks like Western Avenue. He's going to come up to Southwest 154th and Stepping Stone Court right there. Now he's picked up a little speed. And for people just joining us again, this is a stolen pickup that uh, started out in Oklahoma City, in Oklahoma City pursuing it. It has now ended up in more and more police is in that pursuit now when Oklahoma City terminated the pursuit. Uh, I'm looking to see if Air One, Air One is still here, still shadowing uh, that stolen pickup. So Air One is still with us, uh, even though Oklahoma City uh, grounds uh, terminated the pursuit. Uh, Air One has decided to stay uh, with this pickup well, now I believe, okay, now I've seen the more black and whites uh, have now backed off, and I don't know if they may have terminated the pursuit, uh, Alex. But they have definitely turned around. They have stopped and turned around, so more, it appears that more has terminated this pursuit. He is now on Southwest 164th Street, which is good because, I mean, he's getting out here where traffic is very, very light and there's really not to, uh, too much congestion here. So uh, we're just going to see, we're just going to see what happens here, Alex. This is, this has been, been quite a pursuit here. And then, like I said, you can see how fast it's going. It's not really the, the person's not really going very fast. So it looks like we'll be coming up to Pennsylvania Avenue. Well, he's going to turn into this. He's going to turn into this neighborhood here. That's Cold Fire Road. Cold Fire Road, Dry Water Drive. He's going to come up out here. He has stopped. So, uh, okay, he's got out of the pickup. I guess he decided to get the toolbox out of the back of the pickup. It was just making too much noise for him, I guess. I guess he figures if he can get as much stuff out of this pickup that he can, it, it, the charges will be less here, Alex, because he's not stealing a, all the tools and everything that's with it. That's the only thing I can think of. But he is taking the he's taking the toolbox out of the back of this pickup. He is talking on the cell phone, Alex. He's been talking on the cell phone uh, for a while, so I don't know who he's talking to or what's uh, actually going on here.
no black and whites and he's right there at the dead end road of this uh now who is flying up here on him right here okay he's blocked him in but that really doesn't mean anything because he's been getting out okay what's what's happening here that may have been somebody he's been in con i don't know Okay, shooting the tires. Shots, appears shots were fired at the tires. Okay, appears shots were fired. So that must have been an undercover police officer or somebody. I'm not quite sure. But he shot at the tires, it looks like. Uh, I, that's not confirmed. That's just what I, I couldn't see it. But he did point the gun at the tires and, uh, and fire. It looks like, uh, okay, now he's going to go. Southwest 164th. We're trying to see if the tire is still staying up. Okay. Okay, he's stopping. Well, he slowed down. Now he's, oh, we got a police officer right up in front. We got a police officer right up the road, uh, Ben. Uh, he may be getting ready to throw stop sticks. We'll see what happens here. Oh, he missed him. Yeah, I knew that was. There's another officer at this intersection. Two officers at this intersection. Boy, okay, what road are we on now, Ben? Let's see, uh, Pennsylvania Avenue. We are now northbound on Pennsylvania Avenue. So we are, okay, I'm still, still good on airspace here. So now we're back in pursuit of this pickup. We believe shots were fired uh, at the tires of this vehicle when he was stopped in that housing addition, Alex. Uh, that's, that's uh, hadn't been confirmed, but you saw live on uh, from Bob Mills, Scott, who's nine, the uh, person draw that gun and, and shoot at the tires of that uh, vehicle here. Uh, they tried to stop six. Uh, they were uh, not successful with that. He took to the bar ditch on that one and was able to avoid the stop sticks. So he's now, okay, we got two more officers up ahead here. He is northbound on Pennsylvania. Show me that intersection real quick, Ben, to the left. So Pennsylvania and Southwest 149th. Okay, we got He's coming up to the two police officers here. He is slowing down. He knows they got stop sticks. People are getting off the road. People are okay. Now he's taken to the taken to the fields again in the front yards. So we'll see what happens here. He's yelling at the officers. He's yelling something at the officers. I. Boy, I tell you what, Alex, this gets more bizarre by the minute here, what, what's going on. So now he's uh, south of Southwest 149th, east of Pennsylvania Avenue, in, this, uh, in these uh, homes where they have acreages with them and barns. And he is just driving around. What is uh, the street scope? That's going to be Vir South Virginia Avenue, South Virginia Avenue from south, of south 149th. And he is going southbound on Virginia Avenue, which runs into a dead end. Well, that's right, Alex. That hasn't stopped him before. And uh, okay, driver's side tire is flat. Is going so the driver so evidently he did hit that tire with the gunshots. So the rear tire is flat on that vehicle, or going flat. So this is South Virginia Avenue, Oklahoma City. This is their pursuit again. They have black and whites all around the area. Air One is above. Uh, the stolen vehicle here. So he's just sitting here now, but now he's going to move on. So I'm not sure, you know, Alex, exactly how many were shots were fired into that vehicle or not. Or, you know, it looked like the person was firing at the tires, so I don't know if he, was, he fired any at the suspect or not. But uh, we're trying to find out if that was an undercover officer or just a... Um, 
a person that had a concealed carry or something here, but uh, we'll try to, you know, like I said, you're, people just join, this is all breaking news, this is all very fluid, so there's going to be stuff uh, that comes out of this that we may not know yet or, or we may not be real sure about. So we just want people to know that, but this is a pursuit that has been going on for quite a while here. And it started out with a with a look like a 16-foot trailer being pulled by this stolen pickup. He lost that in this field way back uh, south of uh, I-240 on Air Depot when you run into the Oklahoma City uh, uh, Police Officer gun range and it cut across the field there. The trailer came loose and it's just been this pickup from there on. And now we are on, uh, we went through Moore. We're now west of Moore. We're back into Oklahoma City. We are now east of Pennsylvania Avenue uh, on a road called Virginia Drive, which is in a housing addition that uh, you have several, uh, have two or three to five acres with these homes out here. And he has just kind of come to a stop, stop here, Alex. Uh, like I said, the rear tire is flat. Uh, we have police officers uh, up at the top of Virginia, up north up here. Well, now he's going to go on here. And he's been on the phone. He's been on the cell phone with somebody, Alex, constantly talking to somebody on the phone. So I don't know who he's been talking to, uh, but he has been on the, the phone. We saw him stop, you know, and lose the trailer, then stop and cut barbed wire off the truck, then stop and pull the toolbox out of the back and drag it over to the side. I mean, instead of just pulling out and leaving it in the road, he actually dragged it over to the side of the road and then get back in the car and come again. Now he's coming northbound again into the police officers here. So, we'll see what happens here, Alex. The police officer's out of the car. Well, he's gonna take into the, into the uh, fields again. Now he's gonna, he can make it back over to Pennsylvania Avenue from here. He just picks this little road up here. Now he's gonna go back to Pennsylvania Avenue. So we'll see, uh, he's gonna go south on Pennsylvania. Okay, we got about uh, four police officers sitting down here south of him right now. Looks like they may have stop sticks again, but he sees them. So he is he's stopping in the middle of the road, and we have, uh, I believe we're going to have police officers coming up behind him. I'm not sure. Yeah, okay, we got the two officers made it back onto uh, Pennsylvania. They're going to be coming up behind him. So we'll see what happens here. Pennsylvania. I don't know if there's a little cross street down there that we can read Ben or not. But that's Pennsylvania now. So. Right. And if you pan down just a little bit, you'll see the group of officers sitting right there. So he's trying to decide what he wants to do here. Uh, I mean, he's been able to go into the into the bar ditch on the side to avoid the stop sticks. But if he's riding on a flat tire, that truck is probably going to get to the point. They got guns drawn on him now. He's going to go off into the... Well, okay. He is still going to go southbound on Pennsylvania. We got, uh, let's see here, we're still southbound Pennsylvania. Let's see, what do we got? Uh, that is Southwest 164th that we'll be coming up on. I'm not quite sure. Uh, the police officers are moving very, very slow here. They're not, uh, they're not pushing him at all. So this is Southwest 164th that we're coming up to on southbound Pennsylvania. And it looks like that pickup may be struggling a little bit, Alex. Uh, I think it's down to the rim. I think uh, we zoom in here. Well, not quite. 
very close to it. Yeah, you can see it running flat there. So, you know, like I said, uh, I don't know how many shots were fired at that, or, or you know, it, it evidently looks like one hit the tire. Uh, so he's he's moving very very slow here, Alex. Right. Uh, okay, the doors come open. He's looking at his tire back there, so. Yeah, it, it, it wouldn't surprise me with the things, way things have been going that he don't stop trying to change his tire on the truck there, Alex. I mean, he's done everything else uh, with this vehicle, so. Uh, but like I said, Air One is still over. The Oklahoma City police officers are hanging way back. Uh, just just kind of taking their time I think they know I think they know at some point this vehicle he's probably not gonna be able to go very much farther on this vehicle so they're just uh, taking their time here and waiting for this truck to give it up here let's see are we passing the road yet that the street scope has we're still southbound Pennsylvania from 164th southwest 164th was the last major road that we crossed so we're still southbound Pennsylvania Right now, that's just regular traffic. We've got two cars between him and the black and white. Uh, at least the, uh, you know, it's, this is just really, really bizarre. Okay, now he's pulling over into this field. I have no clue what he's gonna try, unless he's gonna try to go. Well, now he's changed his mind. He's gonna come back on to Pennsylvania. That's right, Alex. And I don't know if we got a crew going down to I-35. When we passed it again here this last time, they had the lanes northbound uh, shut down at I-35 there. They may have been letting people by on one uh, one lane or shoulder, but it was shut down when we came back across it into Moore here. I could look up and still see that I-35 was shut down uh, going northbound there. Uh, shut down completely or shut down to where they were just letting them pass on the shoulder there. So I don't know if that person ended up uh, being injured, uh, like I said, they did a great job of saving the car because uh, it happened right in front of me. I mean, uh, Ben Ben Smith had the, he was watching the pursuit vehicle. I was watching what was going on other places, and that car went sideways one way, sideways the other way, almost hit head on into the concrete divider. But that driver was able to save it. It was miraculous that that driver pulled it out and was able to get that car stopped off into the side of the road there. So. Uh, again, that was the, the that was a near uh, could have been a just a complete uh, catastrophe right there on I-35 if that car would have flipped or hit that center median, but luckily it didn't. So, but uh, the police did the right thing. Some police came through. The rest of the police stopped to make sure that driver was okay, and that's uh, what what they were doing up there right now. And then plus it'll be part of this investigation if they ever get this person caught. That will be part of the 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 charges and part of the investigation. So they would have to kind of treat that treat that as a crime scene uh, up there on I-35 because he did clip that car. So again, you see here, we are uh, from Pennsylvania. We are going eastbound across this field. Uh, go to the right just a little bit, Ben. What was that road uh, to the right? That's Indian Hills Road. So we are now north of Indian Hills Road, east of uh, Pennsylvania in this uh, freshly planted field down here and it looks like it may be kind of damp so with a with a flat tire on a four-wheel drive truck it's going to be kind of tough here if that's pretty soft but he is just sitting there now so uh, it looks like this may be a waiting game here Alex and like I said he's been on the phone with somebody uh, okay he's I think he's had enough he's figured the tires flat oh yeah he's upset because the tires flat but uh, it looks like he's going to give up here now if the police can just get out there and get to him. Uh,
Well, they're they're around. The, you know, the trouble is, it looks like that field may be kind of damp, Alex. So we got a police officer south of him sitting there. So uh, I don't th I don't think they want to drive out there just uh, in case they get stuck. So somebody's probably going to have to walk out there and uh, uh, take him into custody. But we'll see what happens here. But it looks like he's figured that he's just finally exhausted all avenues here of trying to get away and has decided to give up. And like I said, and one reason was that was that uh, citizen that you've seen live for Bob Mills, Scotty's Nine on the air, shoot the rear tire of that truck and flatten the rear tire of that four-wheel drive. And so that kind of put a damper on things. He, he couldn't go quite as fast and really couldn't go where he wanted to. He avoided the stop sticks several times that police officers tried to throw out. But uh, it has now come to rest here. And, and when we come around here, uh, I'm not in position right now, but as we come around here, we'll show you where this ended up uh, from street scope here so people have an idea of exactly where this is. So Ben, as we pull around here, show that intersection. It'll be to your right. And uh, from street scope, you can see that uh, Pennsylvania Avenue to Indian Hills uh, Road is at just northwest of that intersection. You know, and uh, kind of a cool thing, if uh, Greg's in the in the control room, what's kind of cool here is we show another street scope thing that we can, if we hold this, we can actually put a ruler up, Alex, from Pennsylvania Avenue right there to where that truck is, and we can show you pretty much the exact distance where that truck came to rest from Pennsylvania Avenue to the middle of that field. So 940 feet is what they're telling me is that was where that pickup ended up east of Pennsylvania Avenue. That is one of the great things about Street Scope is that we have so many tools uh, that uh, to provide the viewer with better information and even b provide the police. Uh, you know, if this was a heavily wooded area, they couldn't see the truck, and that truck was sitting in a heavily treed area, we would be able to measure that from the road and triangulate it and give them an exact position of how many feet from the road that truck would be sitting if that was a completely wooded area and they couldn't see that pickup. So that's one of the great things with Street Scope that we have the opportunity to use in here. But again, it looks like the police are uh, kind of parked down south there. You can see in the left-hand side of your screen to figure out uh, what they're going to do here. Like I said, they had to be real cautious because there's no telling if this guy's got guns in the truck or, or what what happened. Uh, so they don't want to just run up there on him. And he's kind of in a in an area where, you know, they got hay bales in between them and the truck, so they could actually go up to those hay bales to stay in, in cover and not expose herself. But once you pass those hay bales, then you're wide open. So you don't know what that person has or what he's capable of because, as we've seen from this over an hour long chase, he is co was completely unwilling to give up. So you just don't know what's going to happen here. So that's why it's going to take some time here. Looks like we've got one unit moving out here. That may be a four wheel drive uh, unit uh, for the police department. And we got another one moving out. Uh, let me see as we come around. What's that one on the broad side there, Ben? Uh, let me come around here. There's his buddy turning. What does that say on the side? That looks like Oklahoma City PD, Alex, but I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know. Can you tell from where you are, Alex? I'm right. They have Pennsylvania. They got traffic pulled over on Pennsylvania. They still let some traffic through, but the police are starting to shut down Pennsylvania to the west of that truck, just so people aren't driving by in case something does uh, really. Uh, go awry here and, and shots are exchanged since this is a wide open and, and uh, farm country here There's nothing to, to keep the bullets from flying all the way across Pennsylvania here if something was to happen here So police are kind of clearing out Pennsylvania over here to my to my west uh, Right now they position yourself where they can see the driver and the truck better in the field So and like I said air one you see air one right there still he's in a low orbit now uh, around that pickup uh, he'll be able to tell officers if, if the suspect makes a move or anything like that, makes a, 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 a gesture with his hands here. But he's now back in the pickup. He was outside the pickup. Okay, they might be Norman police, uh, Alex. Like I'm sitting right now, I'm sitting just about four and a half miles northwest of a Westheimer airport. So this may be 
in Norman proper here. I'm, I'm not sure, but it looked like when we come around there, it looked like Norman police officers. Looks like that may be an F-250 or F-350 Ford uh, pickup truck. So it uh, more than had the capability of going across the cross country and, and you know through fields and stuff. But like I said, that tire being shot out really uh, really diminished the performance of that uh, truck. And people just looking at that truck now, you, you know, there was a big orange toolbox or yellow toolbox in the back of that thing, and he drug that out, stopped, drug that out, and then he stopped and uh, cut the bob wire off before that cut the barbed wire off from around his truck from running through all the barbed wire fences. So, uh, you know, this person was trying everything he could to get away, Alex. But like I said, we're sitting in this field here uh, just waiting to see what happens and what transpires. Like I said, the, the police officers are not going to push it because as erratic as he's been, they don't know if there's a gun in that pickup, a rifle in that pickup, or whatever. All we saw, we thought it was a gun at first, uh, but it looked like it, it, as we zoomed in, it was more he was talking on the cell phone to somebody, and that person who he was talking to is going to be real interesting to find out who he was talking to on that cell phone. But right now I'm looking up around here, Alex. And police are getting all around this field. They're stationing themselves uh, up north of us, uh, south of us, to the west of us. So basically they're, they're surrounding this entire perimeter right now where this vehicle has come to rest. That's right, Alex. Uh, like I said, you know, you just don't know what he's got in that pickup. Uh, like I said, for this, you know, we've been told this is a stolen pickup. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in that pickup. I can tell you that. We've watched him open up the back doors and dig through stuff. There's, there's a, there was a lot of stuff in this pickup, along with tools and everything else. Uh, so I'm, you know, just speculating. That's my speculation. Is that you know this is possibly a truck from a uh, construction site, uh, work site, somebody's work truck that's in construction or something with all the tools and everything that we've seen come out of that truck. I mean, he was able to find uh, a pair of uh, uh, fence wire cutters, fence pliers, to be able to cut the barbed wire off the, off the truck when it was all tangled up. So, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's just really, really uh, amazing that this person w went to all that effort to not be caught by the police officers. So, again, we're just in a standoff here, uh, located at uh, Pennsylvania Avenue and uh, what I say, Indian Hills Road there uh, from Street Scope. So it's in this field northwest, excuse me, northeast of that intersection. And it's basically just a standoff from here as police get in position, get people off the road, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll see what happens here, Alex. Yeah, it, it's you know it's 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 a situation, Alex. Where if you look where the officers are and where the car is, there's uh, completely no cover for them. If there was a if there was an area where they could move up safely, uh, you know, and not uh, be exposed, they probably would. But you're in a, you're in a situation now where if that person does have a, a, a rifle or if he does have a handgun and you're walking up to that vehicle, you have absolutely no place to go if he starts firing. So that's why they're being so cautious uh, because it's ended up in a situation where uh, there's just too much exposure for the officers to walk up there 
and them not knowing exactly what's inside that pickup. That's right, Alex, and uh, as we pan up here a little bit, Ben, pan up, you can see Pennsylvania Avenue there. we got more police officers arriving on scene. I think what they're trying to do is uh, they've shut down the road now, uh, and what they're trying to do is get, uh, you know, civilians off of uh, off the road and get them moved. You see some vehicles pulled over on the side of the road there, so I think they're trying to get them to move or get them off the road, and they've kind of set up a perimeter all around this uh, from Indian Hills to 164 to Pennsylvania to Indian Hills up to I believe that's 164 uh, so they're getting in position to here to uh, really the way this plays out Alex is they could either sit here and wait till this guy just decides to give up which could be no telling when a very long time or they wait and gather uh, enough officers or uh, SWAT comes out here and they uh, approach the vehicle from all sides and stuff so knowing that that person if he came out with a gun he could only shoot one direction and all the other officers would have a clear shot uh, on at that point uh, on the suspect so that's the only thing and like I said this is all speculation on my part don't don't take any of it as a fact till it, you see it happen but that's what I have seen enough of this over the years that uh, I would think is probably what's being what's being up oh, well I guess he got tired of waiting I guess he's gonna try it again Alex Well, this is just unbelievable here now, okay. So now we're going northbound in this field from Indian Hills Road east of Pennsylvania. Well, now he's going to turn back. Well, now I guess he's just decided to... Boy, it's hard to say what this person... This person could be on something that we don't know about, Alex. I, I just <laughs> I have no clue at this point. But he is now northbound in the field from Indian Hills Road coming up. And I'm looking up northbound, and there's a fence across the north end of this field. It goes into another pasture or a fresh hay field that has just been bailed. So uh, he's just leaving. Boy. I tell you what, Alex, I... I'm getting where I, I don't know what to say anymore because he's almost covered everything I could talk about here <laughs> from running around so much. But, uh, you know, like I said, for people just joining us, he's in this field proceeded northeastbound from the intersection of Indian Hills Road and Pennsylvania, and he's coming to the northeast end of this field. There, one is still over him. Uh, and he's going to try to make his way. I don't know where he can get out uh, as he comes up to this this fence row here. That's 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 true, Alex. I mean, this is uh, this has been a bizarre chase. Uh, like I said, when we picked up on it, we were out to actually shooting the the Veterans Day parade in Midwest City and uh, shooting the flybys uh, that they had for that parade, which was a great parade, by the way. Uh, we, people that are joining us are 
join us for that. That we got aerials of that parade. It was really an emotional moment as uh, the huge American flag came down the street and then the flyby of the T6s, and then they had two F16s do a flyby on that parade, which uh, was really uh, outstanding. Well, then they called us off to pick this chase up. Now, we picked it up on uh, Western and Southeast 44th is where we picked it up. So you can only imagine how long we've been flying and how long we've been doing this. And it's went uh, all over the south side of the city, back out to, towards uh, I-240, south of Tinker, uh, over to Air Depot, down to the Oklahoma City Police Gun Range, through Fields, back around, back up through Moore, back down through Norman, back down through Oklahoma City. So it's all ended up, and now I believe this was uh, Norman, uh, I think we're now in Norman proper, if I'm right. I'm about four and a half miles northwest of Westheimer Airport there in Norman is where I'm circling. So, and then the three uh, SUVs you saw were from the Norman Police Department. So for people that are watching this or doing it, that's where we stand right now, is uh, we thought this come to an end when the truck stopped further uh, south in the field here and he got out and he kind of walked around and uh, got back in the truck and then he decided well I think I'm going to drive some more and uh, he uh, cut a couple of donuts and then he decided to go northeast bound across this field basically ending up to where I mean he really couldn't go anywhere the only thing I can see is that he's just making it more difficult for the police officers to get to him because they're going to have to drive across this field but there's no place at the northeast end of this field that I can see where he can get out uh, with a vehicle. So uh, it looks like it's moving again. So uh, and like I said, through this whole chase, he's been on the cell phone with somebody, talking to somebody on the cell phone. And he's, he's taking his time. It, the pursuit never, the only time the pursuit really hit, hit high speeds was down 240 going eastbound uh, towards uh, Tinker when uh, Street Scope uh, measured him at about 90 something miles an hour, possibly uh, close to 100. There's what Street Scope said he was doing. That was the fastest pur pursuit got. And after that, it became pretty much a normal drive. Now, he did uh, run through some red lights, stop signs, did not yield. Uh, but the pursuit never got really crazy except for that one point on I-35 coming northbound where he's swerving in and out of traffic and the trailer clipped the car and almost caused a severe accident on I-35 around southeast uh, 86th, I believe, 82nd to 86th up in that area on the northbound lanes of I-35. They, uh, they subsequently shut down the lanes of northbound I-35 and were uh, making sure that person was okay. And uh, again, that's going to become, once they take this individual into custody, that's going to be part of the investigation and part of the charges is that uh, wreck he almost caused up on I-35 around southeast 82nd. So. You can see he's just barely moving around now in the truck that has a flat tire where we understand a citizen, an armed citizen, shot that rear tire out on that truck. That's what made this pursuit kind of come to an end here as he drove around as the tire was going flat and was having a hard time here. Sounds like he's on the phone again with somebody. It looks like he's trying to figure out how to change the tire. That is just absolutely amazing that this person... He's kind of looking up at Air One. He's kind of looking up at us. He's still on the phone with whoever he's talking to. This is absolutely unbelievable. But you can see him talking on the cell phone, just casual. He's not. Uh, he's not in any big hurry. But the interesting thing would be who he is who he's on the other end of this phone that he is talking to. And he's looking in the back. Boy, I, I really don't know what this person is doing. He's upset. Can you see him? Let's real quick here, Alex. Uh, ben, come off a uh, uh, zoom. Uh, go to my nose, left uh, left pan, uh, left pan. Follow that road, uh, and we'll show you real quick. Uh, keep going, left pan. And uh, you see Western 
uh, there's an intersection right to drop down just a little bit. There's the intersection of Southwest 164th and Western, and right up at the top of your screen, left-hand corner, is uh, South, that's uh, South, South Moore High School. So that's where we set right now. There's South Moore High School, and uh, so I can see I can see them doing that, Alex. Uh, and of course, that's not the only school around here, but that kind of gives the viewer a uh, reference to where we are. We're right in, that's northeast of us, and the intersection of Indian Hills and Pennsylvania is southwest of us, so we're set right in the middle. And that's where this vehicle has ended up here. So I can understand them because uh, we just don't know what this guy I is doing. I mean, he's been talking to somebody on the cell phone, Alex, and it almost looks like he was looking for a spare tire and a jack there to, to change the tire on this thing. And that's why he's so upset is he can't find a jack or anything to get the to fix the tire on this on this uh, Ford F2. It's either F250 or F350. I'm not sure, but uh, it is a Ford. And uh, so now he's uh, started back up again. And he is uh, on the northeast corner of this field, northeast of the intersection of Indian Hills. Uh, what? Uh, well, for a minute there, I thought he was actually going to make a run at that fence, but I believe there's a there's a there's a ditch or a gully that kind of small ditch that runs along there. Now there is a police officer in this cul-de-sac right across from him. So you have that house with the green roof, you have that police officer in the cul-de-sac right there. But no, he's not getting out, he's gonna back up again. We got two black and whites creeping in from the northwest on him here, coming across the field. Okay, so what's he gonna do here? Okay, we got to boy well you know the more erratic this person gets the more caution they got to take because they just don't know what he's going to do when they walk up on him Alex that's the what uh, okay well he backed through a fence so I guess he decided it's easier to go backwards than it is forward at this point so you can see him going at a pretty high rate of speed here now now, if he keeps going the way he's going, of course, he's got a lot of ground to cover. He can make it back over here to 164th. But, uh, like I said, I just don't know what the condition that truck is in right now. We know it has a, a flat rear tire on the driver's side from shots being fired by a citizen that uh, was, I think, when we were in more uh, at the time and he pulled into a, a, a dead end street on a housing addition and that's where he pulled a toolbox out and then a citizen pulled up in her car and I guess was trying to talk him into giving up and he took off and the citizen pulled the gun and fired a, I don't know how many shots into the rear tire of this truck here and that's what made the pursuit slow way down. But we still went quite a ways, Alex. Here's where we ended up on uh, Pennsylvania and Indian Hills Road, South Indian Hills Road is where we're at. You just don't know, Alex. I mean, it could, it could be talking to his, uh, his wife, girlfriend. I, I mean, maybe they could be talking to him and to, hey, give it up. Or he could be talking to somebody that prompted him to steal this truck and they're waiting for him. Or, or he could be, you know, talking to somebody about, hey, here I am. They're giving him directions and telling him which way to go from where he is. Uh, if you were a driver that didn't know where you were and you had that uh, capability, of getting somebody that's uh, your accomplice on the other end and saying, hey, here I am, where do I go from this point? Uh, it almost seems like that sometimes because he'll sit for a while, talk on the phone for quite a while, then he'll get in his truck and start moving. And he'll start moving towards a, a major street or major road here. So that's another possibility. And like I said, people listen to this, this is just all my speculation. This hadn't been been uh, confirmed or anything. That's what, you know, uh, we're trying to figure out just like everybody else what's going on up here. and. Uh, and because uh, this has been a, a long pursuit for everybody and for the uh, several three different police agencies involved with this with two of those police agencies actually terminating their pursuit 
and uh, then another agency coming in and picking it up. So it's a uh, they got a they got, he's got a lot of people attracted out here right now, Alex. In fact, they pull back. Cruise Aviation, Helicopter Scott Ace 9. He stopped again. It looks like the door may be, uh, well, it looks like he's, he's thinking about getting out. And now he's uh, back in the vehicle. And like I said, this is in the northeast corner of this field uh, where it ended up uh, at east of Pennsylvania, north of Indian, South Indian Hills Road. And I believe that's south 164th. That is up to the north of where the pickup is now as we pan back out, southwest 164th. So he's closer to 164th now uh, than he is to Indian Hills Road. But he stopped in his field again, and like I said, uh, he's acting like he's going to get out, and then he's got back in the truck, and it's moved. And he's, it's just, uh, he just refuses 
to give up. I mean, basically, Alex, this is this is a situation where there's there's only one ending to this, and that's either he's going to give up and take, be taken into custody. There's nothing else that can come out of this uh, because there's just no place to go. I mean, there's so many police officers out here now all around these roads on Southwest 164th and Indian Hills and Pennsylvania that uh, there's really no place to go, and he's cut himself off from being able to go back eastbound because there's kind of a ditch and a fence line there just to the east side of the truck. And uh, I don't think he could make it through there with a flat tire, having a flat rear driver's side tire on that uh, Ford F-250 or 350, whichever one it is, that he could make it through there. But uh, we've seen him do other things. He may try it. He may sit here for a little bit and try it. But uh, this is where everything is, has stopped moving for now is uh, between the Indian Hills Road and Southwest 164th east of Pennsylvania Avenue here uh, in this uh, hay field. So we're looking at the, nobody's moved up on him yet. Air One is still over the top of him circling uh, at this time. But uh, we have seen no movement from any officers. Uh, so we got, uh, looks like where we, okay, that looks like that may be OKC PD there that has moved up into that plowed field there. That's, so that's gonna be south of him uh, from where he is. And then we got police officers all along Southwest 164th that is north of him. And then of course they got uh, Pennsylvania over to the west. Uh, and they pretty much got all the traffic shut down on Pennsylvania and not letting traffic come through on that. So uh, we'll just see what, there's really nothing here to do now, but just sit and wait, Alex, to see what uh, to see what transpires here. Uh, I don't know if uh, maybe they're waiting for one of the SWAT teams together or whatever or, or what they're doing. But uh, again, that you know, he's sitting in an area again where you can't approach a truck just out in the open as an officer. You don't know what he's got. You don't know what's in the vehicle. You don't know if he has a rifle, handgun, or whatever. Because you walk up to that vehicle, you're fully exposed. There's no cover or whatever, and like I said, uh, I've seen these situations before where it's kind of ended like this, and uh, I've seen them use a SWAT team to surround the vehicle and move in from all sides. That way, if the person comes out firing, then somebody in the circle or whatever has a clear shot to take that suspect out before, uh, you know, possibly he injures anybody, but uh, that's, that's probably why they're taking their time uh, to decide what to do with this driver, because he is unwilling to even surrender at this point. He is just sitting in the vehicle right now. He get, like I said, he gets out every now and then and he'll get back in the vehicle. And he's always on the cell phone talking to somebody and then he'll start moving around a little bit. But uh, right now, I think pretty much he's kind of just ended his options here, Alex, but uh, that's just my opinion. That's right, Alex, uh, you know, and, and uh, I know this is for our viewers. This may be uh, getting to the point where it's kind of ridiculous or kind of boring in their, in their opinion, but again, you have to take in all the considerations here of what has transpired in this chase that is going, going to be going up to close to two hours here, Alex, uh, in this chase, what has transpired, what the behavior of the subject is in that vehicle, uh, not knowing what's in that vehicle and what he has on his person. Uh, so the last thing you want to do is, is walk your officers out in a completely open field with no cover and walk up to that truck and, and possibly get injured uh, from that suspect. Uh, you know, we can sit here and speculate all day what the best thing to do is, but uh, they're going to, you know, all they got the, 
right now the officers have has time on their you know is in their favor uh there's no place he can go uh there's nothing he can do the truck is uh, pretty much uh i mean it can st it's still drivable but it has a flat tire on the rear uh and we don't know what else the condition is that truck is because he has drove through uh, steel poles, fences, gates, everything else, ditches. <clears throat> so we don't know what the condition is of that truck except for the flat tire on back. It may be worse. There may be something broken that we don't know about. But it's all options have pretty much run out here. So now you're just in a waiting game. And that's in the police favor here because uh, there's really no place for him to go. But the last thing they want to do is, is – uh, put herself in harm's way by walking through an open field up to a pickup that they know nothing about that suspect. That's right, Alex, and uh, just a quick update here. The police have shut down uh, Southwest 164th uh, from uh, Western to Pennsylvania. So they've shut that uh, stretch of road down. They've also shut Indian Hills down between uh, uh, Pennsylvania and Western. So that is shut down now. It looks like traffic is still traveling on uh, Western uh, to the north and south, and it appears that they are still letting traffic move. Uh, well, here we go again, Alex. Uh, he is on the move again, and it looks like he's trying to weigh his options up of going across that uh, ditch right there, or that fence row, to see if he can get through it. Uh, so he may, it looks like, well, boy, at this point, uh, it looks like he's going to go in reverse. Okay, now there, if he follows that uh, road up there in that field, there's a set of metal gates. There's a set of metal gates at the north end of this. There is a police officer blocking the road there. So he is going backwards, so it looks to me like he's going to build up speed uh, and go through this gate. They got the stop sticks ready for him. That is uh, 164th, Southwest 164th. So it looked like he's looking. He's talking to somebody. So, okay, he's, he's still kind of moving. He's holding on to something, Alex, that I can't see uh, exactly what he's holding on to, but.
right, so he's sitting, he was yelling at somebody. There are police officers right there at the corner. It looked like he may be trying to go through those two metal gates right there that come out on Southwest 164th from this field, but there are officers right there. So, okay, we got OHP coming up now. So now OHP's uh, got some of their people involved in this. That's right, Alex, and uh, like I said, he's just sitting there still. Uh, Air One's still circling here. So I don't know if he's talking to somebody or, or what is going on right now, but he's moved closer to the northeast corner of this field, and now he's just south of one, southwest 164th between Pennsylvania and Western here, uh, sitting in this uh, hay field. So, but anyway, the good thing is uh, they have shut down Southwest 164th between Western Pennsylvania. They've shut down uh, Indian Hills Road, looks like, uh, between Western Pennsylvania. So again, it's, uh, I'm trying to see, it looks like, well, they got police officers moving up Pennsylvania now. Looks like they are still letting traffic through uh, through Pennsylvania going southbound and northbound, but uh, it's not a very busy road out, out in this area, Alex, and uh, Western is still moving to the north and south here, uh, so they haven't shut those two roads down, but the two uh, Indian Hills, two east-west roads, Indian Hills, southwest 164th, they have completely shut them down, so uh, here we stand again, Alex. Uh, he's moved a little further, closer to the road, but it's come to a stop again, and now we're just in a, in a waiting situation. West Harbor Tower, Helicopter News 9. Yes, sir, we're about four and a half uh, to the northwest of you on this pursuit for quite some time. Would it be possible to get a hold of crews and have them hot fuel me if I come in there? Uh, no, I don't. Roger, thank you. Cruise Aviation, Helicopter Sky News 9. Yes, sir, I'm sitting out here on this pursuit. We're in a standoff now, but I need fuel. Can you hot fuel me? Yeah, roger that. Yeah, Greg, they, they won't hot fuel me, though. That's the thing. I was going to try a, uh, I'm going to try a double AR at Will Rogers, see what I can do. Two ninety seven. I need to go here. Okay, well, I'm just going to break for fuel then. I guess I have to go to Westheimer. All right, we're at, oh. Well, 
Alex looked like he took his seatbelt off there. He had his seatbelt on. It looks like he took his seatbelt off for some reason. So maybe maybe this is going to – hopefully maybe this will come to an end. I don't know. But uh, he's just uh, pretty much relaxed in there, sitting in that truck, uh, not doing anything. We are going to have to uh, – leave here shortly Alex and uh, I'm gonna have to leave it over to you and our ground crews here but uh, again if people just joining us this is a pursuit that's went on for probably I, I don't know the exact time Alex now but probably over two hours and uh, it has now come to rest in this field uh, just south of southwest 164th between Pennsylvania and Western and where we have several police agencies involved with this now along uh, more Norman Oklahoma City and now the OHP so uh, right now it's in a standoff situation with this person in this truck and uh, and we'll get back as soon as we can Alex back to you Roger that Westheimer Tower, News 9, we're inbound to uh, land it uh, on the ramp. Uh, Roger that to proceed eastbound. I'm sorry, Greg, I was talking to Tower, say again. Did you run over something? Well, I'm glad we got that cleared up, Alex. And like I said, we're we're back on scene. We're good for another three hours here if uh, if this thing decides to go three hours. So we're we're in good shape. But uh, yeah, he has moved back down to the south end of this hay field here, uh, right where he crossed to the fence line from the from the planted uh, plowed field. Uh, police officers are moving uh, that are south here, Ben. You, yeah, you can see them right there on the right hand side. They are moving back, uh, racing back to the west here, uh, and leaving the one guy there. So I'm not sure. Uh, sure what uh, you know what's going to transpire here Alex uh, but uh, Andy and Jess have been doing a great job for filling in until we got back up here man and everybody's done a great job of keeping this bizarre pursuit and everything keeping the public informed of exactly what's going on here as this suspect is still in the pickup still hasn't decided to give up after all the the craziness that has been involved with this the, the good thing Alex out of this whole thing is there hadn't been any injuries. I, I don't believe the person on I-35 was injured. I think there was more precaution, and then that will be also a, uh, a crime scene once this person is taken into custody because he did almost cause that uh, wreck on I-35 around uh, Southwest 82nd, 86th there. So again, uh, you know, for people that uh, are still watching this, the truck is still sitting there. He's still in the truck, and I guess I heard uh, Alex that he is doing a Facebook Live now and asking for an attorney. Well. He's definitely going to need one after all this, but, uh, you know, he, he needs to just uh, go ahead and just give it up because there's absolutely no place to go from here. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of these guys do this stuff just to just to make the make the police officers have to work and have to wait and spend their time uh, instead of just knowing the final outcome of this thing is going to be him in custody and just giving it up and, and, and taking your medicine here. But... Uh, Again, he's still sitting in this field. The truck is stopped again, and uh, we'll uh, keep you updated as we go.
Okay, we got a red light up here, Greg. We, we, we're resetting it here and uh, coming back up here just shortly. Okay, Alex, uh, we got uh, three police uh, cruisers coming in from the west in this uh, hay field here. So you see where he's sitting. Uh, you can see them coming around uh, right here, and they're uh, coming over. So let's, ho let's hope that this is going to be the end of this thing. I mean, let's hope they're going to come up here and the suspect's going to give up because, like I said, there's absolutely no place for this person to go. There's only one outcome out of this and this is going to be him being taken into custody uh, it's been a crazy pursuit like you said it's went on for well over two hours the truck is still moving slowly but I mean it but that rear uh, flat tire uh, there's really not much he can do uh, and it looks like an OHP trooper is the one that is going to come up here and uh, and uh, well, let's see if that's an OHP. Is that an OHP cruiser? Okay, that's the sheriff. So now we got the sheriffs involved in this, and this guy still don't want to give up. He is running from the sheriff, so now he's going to go southbound out of this uh, hay field. He's going to go back through to the planted field here. Uh, I don't know why they didn't follow him. Evidently, they didn't think their cars could uh, cross that uh, little drainage ditch there, but now he's traveling at a high rate of speed down this plowed field. Uh, Alex, this is just getting more bizarre by the minute here. I mean, this person just needs to give it up and or they, else they need to just come out and get him and take him into, surround him, take him into custody or whatever. This is just becoming a cat and mouse game here. And like I said, this is between uh, Pennsylvania Western Avenue. It is just south of Indian Hills, South Indian Hills Road now, south of Southwest 164th in this uh, hay field. Uh, and now he's moved off down here uh, and just stopped again. So again, uh, we'll see what happened. We thought maybe it was going to come to an end there, but uh, this person just doesn't want to give up. And uh, so uh, I don't know exactly what's going to take place here. They have enough police officers out here now that uh, they're pretty much got everything shut down. I mean, there's no place for him to go, Alex. There's just absolutely no place for him to go. So. Uh, cover for the police officers. But you saw that sheriff's car get up pretty close to him. bone him or something or push him off to the side but he didn't so anyway uh now we got uh i don't know uh we didn't see what sheriff was so now we got uh, even one more agency involved in this alex is we've got the sheriff department uh county sheriff uh in this so uh maybe she might have been mclean county sheriff uh but i'm not sure they can check on that but uh, again everyone's still over the scene still circling around him now he's come to a stop here in the middle of this uh, rate of speed from the hay field. Uh, so, we'll, boy, I'm telling you, Alex, he's sitting just, uh, he's sitting just uh, north of uh, South Indian Hills Road now in between Western and Pennsylvania. So hopefully something will, something will take place here, Alex. Uh, that's about all I got right now.
Okay, here we go again, Alex. We got uh, police officers racing. On the move again. You're going to see them coming in the screen here, so we're going to see what. Headed towards Pennsylvania. He's kind of headed. Okay, we're kind of. Do you have our shot back, Alex? Okay. Okay, so now he's headed west. He's going over towards Pennsylvania. Okay, now from where I see on Pennsylvania, there, there's one police officer coming down the road. There's a police officer coming uh, west to east on Indian Hills. Okay, he's going to make it. He's going to make a turn here. Okay. Playing with the police officers. He and he's headed back towards. Uh, he's headed back towards the the hayfield. Okay, I don't know what he's going up here to this. Yeah, he may be losing part of the tire. I don't know because that tire was no, that's something out of the bed. It looks like maybe a tow a tow rope or something. Okay, he's coming up to Indian Hills South Indian Hills Road here. He's going to be uh, getting on Indian Hills Road here pretty quick. Okay, you see the road right there? Okay, they okay, they hit him. They pitted him right there. Now he's headed back. This is incredible. This is incredible. They pitted him right there, but he was able to spin around and come out of it. Almost hit our own news unit down there. Jesse and, and Andy were down there on the ground. Almost hit our news unit as he came around there. Luckily, they're all right. But uh, they need to put this. At, they need to put this to an end right now, Alex. He's headed back northbound across that field back towards Southwest 164th. He's going to go through again. See if the police officer is going to do it. He's going to do it. Okay, so what do we got gathered up down here on Southwest 164th? So we have police officers. a strap that hit the hit the truck when he spun around and now he's coming up on southwest 164th okay now he's cutting across the field from southwest 164th going off into now that may be pretty marshy down in there that may be kind of soft i don't know but we'll we'll see what happens here that is an f uh, that is a four So again, here it's uh, uh, pardon Alex. What'd you say? Boy, I, I'd hope so. I lost patience a long time ago, Alex. But uh, they're, you know, like I said, they're they're taking their taking their time here. But uh, it looks like uh, he's not quite sure where. So he's getting ready to go on, off road. Uh, so he buckled the seat belt. He's pulled up here. He may get in here where he can't get out, but we got a, we got somebody coming up to him right now. So who is this? This the sheriff's department looks like. Well, he just believes that the sheriff—he just believes that the police officers aren't going to do anything, Alex. They may have to end this thing. I don't know. 
he just pretty much uh, decided that they're not gonna gonna bring it to an end so he's just gonna do what he needs to do to keep chasing everybody around all day but uh, right now we are north of southwest 164th east of Penn in this farmers field here so now he's going backwards we have an oil field workover crew down here okay maybe this will end it maybe this will maybe this will end the whole thing right here he's backed off into a he didn't see that pond right there so maybe this will end it I hope not I hope the thing is stuck and he can't get out but uh, he's trying he's still trying Alex he's still trying to get it out and stuff but they need to get up there and get get that surrounded right there and just uh, do what they need to do to get this individual into custody because now he's he's uh, put uh, our crews in danger on the ground he's put uh, police officers in danger uh, and everything else so they need to bring this to an end before somebody gets hurt I can see him getting out Well, he's he's backing out. He's, he better pull his pants up. I gotta tell him that he ain't going anywhere. But uh, he's backing through the pond. He's he's taunting the police. It's almost like he's taunting them, telling them to come and get him and stuff. So he's gonna walk out the other side. Yeah, we're okay, Alex. They're not, I don't believe they're gonna do anything. They're, they're just, they'll just tackle the guy. I don't believe he's armed or anything like that, so, but, yeah, he's just taunting the police now. Oh, now he wants to run. Okay. So, we'll see where he goes from here. He really has no place to go. Air One is right over the top of him. Well, now he's going back in the water. So, now he's walking. Now we got to... We got another uh, truck coming up here. Another sheriff's vehicle looks like it's going to come up on him. We got a police officer there. Got taser pulled. That was a taser. He tased the suspect right there. Suspect is down, and they're taking him in custody. Boy, what a day! What an afternoon, Alex. That's right, Alex. This, this is, and uh, I hope our, our viewers that uh, they really got to see quite a quite a pursuit today, man. Uh, you know, and like I said, the good thing out of this, Alex, uh, nobody got hurt except for you know. I still like to find out uh, how that uh, person is doing on I-35 there that uh, spun out but uh, saved it. I, you know, they were probably more scared than anything, but I hope they're they're all right. Uh, I hope nobody got hurt in that, but. Uh, from that point on, it was just uh, it was just to taunt the police as all this was, and uh, but then when he endangered our crew and endangered the, the the police officers, they did the right thing, decided it was time to to take care of this situation. So again, right now they're uh, putting him in handcuffs. They're checking all these pockets and everything, make sure he, he has nothing on him, but. Uh, uh, Thank goodness that he didn't see that pond right there, that little pond, and, and drove off into that pond because that's what stopped him. Because there's no telling how much longer this could have went on because he was headed up towards an oil field road with a workover crew, and he could have got out on this oil field road. There were no police officers on that oil field road or anything, which would have took him back over to Western. So this could have turned into another uh, pursuit down Western there, Alex. But uh, he ran off into that pond, got stuck, and then he, then he got out and just taunted the police and just walked off uh, like there you're not going to do anything to me and uh, luckily that one officer got up close enough to him to taser him and, and put him down and they took him into custody so you're seeing right there they're they're working uh, to make sure he has nothing in his pockets we'll bring him up here in just a second and put him in a car Brenton Hager, okay. Oh, Brenton Hager, okay. 
Well, Alex, I'm glad this came to a, a safe ending. Uh, the suspect is in custody. It's been a while, though. Uh, actually started out uh, in the morning uh, when we were covering the Midwest City uh, Veterans Day Parade, and we picked it up uh, on Southeast 44th and Western and went everywhere through uh, uh, three different di municipalities. Uh, ended up with uh, uh, Norman, Moore, Oklahoma City, uh, then we finally got, to, I believe that was McLean County Sheriff. Uh, may be wrong on that, Alex. You might want to double check that. But a sheriff department and OHP. So several, several law enforcement agencies out here. But uh, they did a great job of keeping everybody safe, keeping everything under control. Like I said, the, the whole factor out of this thing, Alex, was that he was stopped in a very open field. So they just couldn't send officers up there walking up to him. Because at that point, we didn't know if he had a gun or whatever. But obviously, when he got out of the truck, uh, he had nothing in his hand, but he always could have a handgun on him. But still, uh, at that point, they knew after endangering our, our crew on the ground uh, that it was time to bring this thing to an end. that good job guys yeah man I'm just it's crazy I think we're having microwave uh, issues. Uh, yeah, we got a red light on it. I don't know what's red light on. Ben doesn't say what what it. It's it's the second bar down. Uh, those guys walking.
Yeah, I can't either. Yeah, that's all right. We're out of here, guys. See you all later. Well, that burned up a lot of the day.